Father. Let us worship him this morning, this evening. Let us glorify his holy name. He is the Lord. Worthy to be praised, worthy to be exalted, worthy to be adored. One third of the year 2023 has passed away. We are here, we are alive, we are breathing. The joy of the Lord is our strength. Let us just worship him. He deserves all the glory. He is our all in all. Is all we have, is all we know, is what that is he, all that is able to turn again our captivities. Let us worship him this morning. Let us honor and adore him because this month he has proved himself to us as the man of Galilee, the one that walked upon the sea, the one that made the blind to see, the one that made the, the death to come back to life, the one that told the woman that was weeping, say, Weep not, and it, she, he turned his, his, his weeping to joy. Let us worship him this morning. Let us say thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. For the month of April, he has proved himself. He provided all our needs. He went ahead of us everywhere we went. He took charge of all that mattered to us. Let us say thank you, Jesus. We glorify your name. And you that did this to us, we are even the one leading us to the month of double portion. We thank you because in the, in the month of double portion, you will turn things around for us. Let us thank him because we know that as we are going into the month of uh, May, the Lord will arise for our sake. In everything that we have received that he has proved himself, he's going to double it next month. He's going to take us to the next level. He's going to take us to a level that we are going to be asking ourselves, how did we get here? The, 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 the dream-like miracle. He says when a lot turns the captivity uh, 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 of, of Zion around, they are like them that dream. He's going to make us be like those who dream in this coming month. Let us say, Father, thank you ahead in the name of Jesus. In Jesus' name we have given thanks. Then we are going to go to God. Ask for forgiveness of our sin. The Lord forgive us everything that will not allow us to receive next month. Father, please forgive us in Jesus' name. Wash us with your blood in the name of Jesus. Father, Lord God Almighty, what will not let us receive fully the double portion you proposed for us in the month of May? Father, wash it away from our lives with your blood. Your blood that you shed on the cross of Calvary, Father, you will use that blood to wash away every sin, every sin that will not allow us to receive from you fully in the name of Jesus. In Jesus' name, we have prayed. Then we are going to speak into the month of May because tomorrow the month of May begins and we are going to tell God, that month you, you, you have tagged it as the month of double portion. All In all areas of my life, I receive double portion of goodness, double portion of joy, double portion of increase, double portion of elevation, double portion of joy, double portion, my Lord and my God, of, of peace in my home, double portion, even in, 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 in my promotion, double portion, even in, 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 in your pro provision for us, double portion of protection, I will not fall victim of any form of evil in the month of uh, uh, May in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Then we are going to say, Father, teach me your word today. Me, myself, teach me. In the language I will understand. Father, teach me in the mighty name of Jesus. In the language I will understand. Father, your word today. Teach me in the name of Jesus. Give me divine understanding in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. And so, Father, I hide myself behind the cross. I pray, Father, that you come up, speak to your children today in the name of Jesus. I cancel the knowledge, my knowledge. I replace with your utterance today in the name of Jesus. Speak to each one of us, people listening on Facebook, people listening on uh, uh, YouTube, in the, the language we will all understand. And at the end of time, when the trumpet shall sound, we will be ready to go with the man of Galilee in the name of Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. Hallelujah. I will be as brief as I can in the name of Jesus. We have talked about the man of Galilee. We've been talking about him from the beginning of the month. We talk about when he was born. It was 2,000 years ago. He was born. 
he walked upon the sea. He walked on uh, on the sea. Yes, he raised the dead, opened the eyes of the blind. We can be talking one and one of all these ones concerning us. He has um, provided for the needy when Peter was um, had struggled all night. He came uh, in unto them, changed the situation. When they needed to pay taxes, he sent Peter. He said, "When you get to the sea, the first fish, the first fish you catch, will be you open the mouth, find the money for taxes." This he, has, he did while he was here on the surface of the earth. But guess, guess, guess what, brethren? He did it. He has been doing it for us also. If we look into our lives, we will see that all these examples of what he did, he has done for you and I. He has supplied our needs. He has kept us alive. We had been sick at one point. He has raised us. He, did, he went ahead. He suffered for you and I. He died. And then, he rose again. And then, last week we were told that while the children of uh, the disciples we are watching him being taken up. Guess what happened? Two angels came and told the disciples, Ah, this man that you are looking, this man, you men of Galilee, because they were men of Galilee with him also. This man you were looking going up, he will come down, he will come back the same way he went. So, in conclusion, I want to encourage us today. It's coming back again, it's coming back again. When going, he promised that he's coming back again. Jesus is coming back again, he's coming back again. Glory, hallelujah, Jesus is coming back again. He's coming back again. Jesus is coming back again. When going, he promised that he's coming back again. Jesus is coming back again. He's coming back again. Oh, glory. Hallelujah. He's coming back again. Jesus is coming back again. That is what we want to look at this morning. The, what are we supposed to do with this knowledge? Because wisdom is proper application of knowledge. If we go into the fridge and we see a label on a bottle of Coke, even though Coke is there and they say poison, a fool will say, it's a lie. It can't be poison. Why would they put poison in the fridge? I will drink it and try. But a wise person, even if he's thinking that it's a lie, we put it back. If somebody tells you and say, he gets hold of you, he's holding a gun, he says, I'm going to shoot you now. If you are stupid, you will say, go ahead. Go ahead. You can't do it. It's not possible. And guess what? Only one war leads to death. So, what I'm saying is, we have the knowledge that Jesus promised that is coming. I don't know who you are. I don't know how long you've been a Christian. I don't know how long you will remain a Christian. I don't know how long it is that Jesus is coming. But he promised that he's coming back. That man of Galilee that walked upon the sea, that healed the sick, that set the captive free, he came when he first came. He came to die for us. He came to, to pardon us. But when he comes back again, he's coming to judge us. So on whose side will you be when he comes? So, first of all, before I go into what are the things we need to do, because it says occupy till I come. Number one, you have to be born again. It is very key. If you are watching right now, 
Whenever it is you are watching and you are not born again, <laughs> it's coming back again means nothing to you because it's not coming, coming to take you. It's just coming to take the righteous. It's coming to take those who are his. Those who he talked about in the book of John chapter 1 verse 12. He said he came to his own, his own did not believe him. But as many that believe him, he, be he gave power to become children of God. He says son of God, but I say children because I'm a daughter of God too. So brethren, if you are not born again, you are watching. Right now, pause the, press the pause button. Go on your knees and say, Lord Jesus, I believe you came, you died. I believe you rose again and I believe you are coming back. Please make me one of your children. I surrender my life to you. Say it to him because it is with your mouth to confess. And tell him that, Lord, please write my name in the book of life and let me never go back to the world. In Jesus' name we pray. If you have said that word, you are born again. Let's go ahead. After getting born again, those of us that are children of God, what are we supposed to do to occupy till he comes? We will see it in the Bible passage we read today in the book of 1 Thessalonians. Uh, we first read um, verses um, 11 to 13, I think. And then 1 Thessalonians 5, 12 to 22. I will dwell because it says almost the same thing. In that 1 Thessalonians 5, 12 to 22 tells us what we are supposed to be doing to occupy till it comes. He said, I beseech you, brethren, to know that which labor among you and are over you in the Lord. Admonish you. Those that are working, our pastors, our leaders, let us admonish them. Let them move close to them. Let, them rest. let us respect them. Let cognize those that labor among you and be at peace among yourselves. If you, you recognize people. When the Bible says recognize, it's not that because you know, just know that is my pastor. How do you show that you recognize that they are your leaders? Respect. Honor them. Let them know that you appreciate the work of God they are doing. They are the one that teaches us the way of salvation. They teach us how to walk on. When they correct you, obey. Don't fight because your leader corrects you. And says, how, how can he talk to me like that? Who gave him the authority? I want to learn anointing, okay? We have anointing too. What does he know? Just like uh, Aaron and Mir Miriam did when they were talking to their brother, Moses, and God get, got angry. He says, verse, and to esteem that every highly, to extreme them very highly in love for their work's sake and be at peace among yourselves. Esteem them very highly. He says in the book of Psalms, touch not my anointed, do my prophet no harm. Somebody you esteem highly. How can you say, how can you talk to me like that? And you are, well, I, am I, your, are, are we on the same uh, level? God can put a 22-year-old pastor on you, I mean, in your parish, in your church, and you are 50 or you are 70. As long as God has placed him in that place, Honor them for their work's sake. That is what the Bible is saying. Honor your pastors. Honor your ministers. Honor your leaders. That is the way to occupy till he comes. We don't know the ages of the disciples. Maybe I don't. But I know it's not all of them that Jesus was older than. But they called him master. When he says... Peter, get up and go and he got up and did all of them as they were being told. 
I did not see anywhere that any of them said, who, who, who made you the boss of us? So it is very key. We look at that. Hebrews chapter 12 verse 14 says we should be at peace with ourselves. Those are the little, little things that we need to keep doing. Do, do it deliberately. It's not like we flow with the crowd. We be deliberate about it because Jesus is coming. From all the signs we see, it is soon. Yeah, and if Jesus doesn't come in 100 years, we will go to him one way. And that is true death. And we are not told which day anybody will go that will say, I will repent two days to my death. So we have to be very careful. We have to be at peace with each other. And um, we should go ahead, warn those who are unruly. If we see any of our brethren doing something wrong, we shouldn't be quiet about it. We can correct each other in love, not condemning each other. But ah, this one that you are doing, brother or sister, let's um, find a way to find something to it. We have to comfort those that are faint-hearted. Comfort those that are faint-hearted. How can somebody be faint-hearted? People who are sick, who have nothing to eat, who are maybe they are even down. One thing happened to them. What are we doing? Do we see a child falling in the gutter and walk away? Or are we the like the rabbi that saw the man that the thieves had beaten and say, ah, I'm watching my own holiness alone? In this area, some people, some 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 even non-believers do better than us Christians. But we are the ones that are supposed to be very, very keen. We should love people around us and show them that we are the children of our Father in heaven. Jesus is coming soon, and all these things matter to him. That's why it's being written in the book by Apostle Paul, uh, uh, in the book of Thessalonians that we read. Uphold the weak. Don't say because somebody is weak, you say... Uh, well, God knows what is wrong with them. I have told us before, I mean, maybe not on this um, platform, that before I went um, to take mental health course, I used to think it's the fault of anybody that is doing uh, drinking, smoking, or drugs. Or for me to know that it is um, one problem, it is a sickness that God... Uh, treatment can take care of and um, counseling we have to be patient with all people make you angry my slogan always is how many people will you fight with because almost every day someone will make you angry if you keep angry with everybody you have nobody so we have to be patient forgive and move on forgive and move on Unless those that don't want to move on, then you let them be, but forgive. Do not render evil for evil. I'm trying to not take too much time. The Bible, um, if you, all these things I'm saying is in First Thessalonians between the uh, uh, chapter 5, 12, and 22. You'll see there. Do not... <laughs> Do not be revengeful. He did that to me. I will show him. I will show her. It's not of God. Pursue what is good to all. Don't be selfish. So many Christians of these days are too, too holy. They are holier than thou. So they will not talk to, to sinners. And if you don't talk to sinners, how are you going to win them to Christ? Jesus, our God, the Lord that we, we, we look unto, went to sinners and brought them to Christ. He went to the lady by the well who had married five husbands and is living free lancing with another man. 
that was, she was not married with. Jesus spoke with her and called her to God. How do you, if you, if, 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 if you don't talk to unbelievers, you are too holy. How do you bring them to Christ? Somebody preached to you. Who are you preaching to? But the mind of Christ is that we should bring people to the kingdom. How are you doing it? It says we should rejoice always. Does that mean there won't be problems? Yes, there are problems sometimes. But God wants us to rejoice constantly. In all things, we should give thanks. Because some we don't understand what is happening, but God does. Um, sometimes we are sitting on our own. The enemy is trying to do evil. And God will try to avert it. But we won't know that is what God is doing. That's why we should learn to rejoice always. God won't, and it's, and it's, it's a, it's a command. It's not uh, something you have to decide about. Even when things are bad, rejoice in the Holy Spirit. Let the Holy Spirit help you. It says we should pray, continually pray without ceasing. Because we cannot do it by ourselves. We can't occupy till it comes by ourselves. We need the help of the Holy Spirit. So that is why we need to ask him for help. Pray. In all situations, give thanks. It's there. It says in all situations, give thanks. That is, it comes with rejoicing always also. It says we should abstain from evil. We should put our trust in God. We should rest in God. And abstain from anything that is close to evil. Anything that we say that my that is not, you know, like I always say, because I'm trying to finish on I mean I have time. That's why. If I don't if I'm not sure if something is right, I'm not sure, then I will leave it alone. It is not a do or die. Because I don't want to get to heaven and realize that is what will not make me enter the gates. If I'm not sure something is right, leave it. to say abstain from evil. That's what I'm saying. Then do not quench the spirit. Don't say when somebody comes and say, ah, you see, the Lord told me. Say, who told you? When did you become a Christian that you say the Lord told you something? And then sin quenches the spirit. You know, sin against the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit will just be quiet and be looking at you. He says that's the only one that has no forgiveness. You want to make go to heaven? Don't quench the Spirit of God in anybody else, not in you. Also, then when prophecies come, do not ignore. And when they bring prophecy, put it to te test. Does it align with the Word of God? What I'm trying to say is that what we need to do when your brother is hungry, give him food. Um, when your brother is thirsty, give him water. Whether the brother is your enemy or your friend, <laughs> just do the right thing always, believing that Jesus will come at any time. Because if you know Jesus will come at any time, you like okay. For instance, if you are told that tomorrow Jesus is coming back, tomorrow, he's coming tomorrow. Things you will do. Keep doing it on a daily basis. Like today is the last day. Remain in His love. Love others as you love yourself. Do what is right. When your brother comes to me and you and say, oh, we have not eaten in two days. Don't pray for them alone. You know, one uh, mommy of mine, it's late now, she has been going to be with the Lord. She said, when you, even before you pray, go and when say, oh, my children, we've not eaten. Go and bring two, three cups of rice. Put it there. Put onions. Put pepper. And say, let us pray. 
You will see that the amen will be different from the amen of when he doesn't know whether food is coming. Don't tell your brother, I pray for you, be clothed and be fed. When you have the ability, you have three coats. You have two coats. Somebody is walking naked. And you say, be clothed. I pray that God will provide. That is why he, he, there's a, a, I was in one parish when the pastor would say, when we say, God, send us help us in this church. We want to build our church. Send us help. I will say, no, make us help us. Because when you start being the help, God will continue to increase you. It's, it's, a, it's a testimony that I can say it and say it over again. That if you give, it shall be given unto you. The more you scatter, the higher you go. I was talking to someone sometime who, who has a ministry of giving, giving, giving like that. And I said, ah, God will help us so that this, um, I can't remember how we got to that. And we both said it together like, the more you give, the more God gives you. Be a giver because God does not, not owe any man. You will re get the reward here on earth and in heaven. That is, like I said, if you are born again and you eventually do the work, you walk the walk and you make it to heaven. Brethren, I said I don't want to waste too much time. But right now, you have heard little, little, little things. That those are not things that, um, <laughs> uh, how will I say, it's not killing. It's not that if you kill a person, then if you, if you murder. I'm talking about little, little Christian things. That you live a life of integrity. People can say, okay, if she says this, that is what she or she wants to do. You are not a, the kind of child of God who will tell half truth. Or who will tell a lie blatantly and say, I'm, I'm, I'm preventing problems. Who are you? Are you waiting? Are you get, waiting? Because Jesus is coming soon. That man of Galilee is coming soon. And I pray that he will meet you. When he comes, he will meet me ready we won't be sleeping we'll be like the ten white um, the five wise virgins not the foolish ones because all that needs to be done the devil will not come and uh, and um test you with killing he knows you won't kill the devil will not come and test you with adultery he knows you won't commit it but little little things that are little foxes that might spoil the what do they call it is the one we are talking about i pray that god will help you and i in jesus name so shall we go ahead and begin to tell god to thank god for that opportunity to hear this word because he's coming soon and he's telling us to prepare as children of god the virgin that are sleeping let us wake up if we don't have extra oil, the extra oil is what I have pointed out to you. Love your neighbor. Love God. Have integrity. Tell the truth always. Forgive always. Let go. Tell God thank you for teaching us this word today. And that God, we are going to go ahead and say, Father, please give me grace. To do that which I need to do. To be ready when the trumpet will sound. To be ready when you call me home. I don't want to go to hell. Every little, little things, every little uh, spot, every little blemish in my life. Grace, O oh Lord God Almighty, to wash it away. Use your blood to wash it and teach me to do the right thing always. In Jesus' name, we have prayed. And so, Father, we just thank you for your word today. We know your word is yea and amen. Your word is true always. You have spoken to us. Grace, O oh Lord, to obey totally. Grant unto us in Jesus' name. In Jesus' most precious name, we have prayed. Amen. amen.